All right, so now we can begin to understand what Keynes was arguing in terms of economic theory. Here's what he was saying. He said if there's a problem in the economy, that problem is an aggregate demand problem, not a short run aggregate supply problem. The problem isn't that, that uh, wage rates need to adjust and the short run aggregate supply curve needs to move. What he argued is that the aggregate demand curve needs to move. Now I want to remind you that aggregate demand is related to total expenditure. That, a, that an increase in total expenditure is synonymous with an increase in aggregate demand. And that a decrease in total expenditure is synonymous with a decrease in aggregate demand. So his argument was that if the economy is in a recessionary gap and we need to increase real GDP, that the way that that's going to happen is by increasing total expenditure. Now, total expenditure is made up of four parts. So which one should we increase? Well, he said that consumption is the driving force in the economy. So his argument is that consumption is going to do most of the work. So if you want to increase total expenditure, you're, you're going to rely on consumption to do most of the work. But here's the interesting thing. That consumption is going to do the work without people, without individuals having to be, um, having to be uh, strong-armed into spending. He says they're going to want to spend. People are going to want to spend. The only thing that needs to happen is in order for them to spend more, their income needs to go up. So somehow or another, we need to increase, or Keynes says that we need to increase the income of households so that consumption will do its work. As income goes up, consumption will go up, and then total expenditure goes up. The problem comes here is how. How do, we get, how do we increase income? Well, here's the magic part. You're not going to believe what you're about to see, or you will believe it, but it's really awesome. We're going to affect income, which will then affect consumption, which will then affect total expenditure by changing investment, government spending, or net exports. Here's what Keynes argued. He said, if we can inject money into either investment or government spending or net exports, that will cause an effect that increases income and then subsequently increases consumption. It would look something like this. I'll draw it down here. That if we either increase investment or increase government spending, or increase net exports, that any one of those things, or a combination of the three, will lead to an increase in income. That increase in income will then lead to an increase in consumption, and then the increase in consumption, combined with the increases in these other things here, ultimately will lead to an increase in total expenditure, which will then positively affect real GDP in the economy. Okay, And then the same thing, if we decrease, decrease, or decrease any one of these, it'll decrease income, decrease consumption, decrease total expenditure, and that will bring down real GDP if that's what it is that we need to do. But my understanding is, is that his primary theory was not on decreasing real GDP. His primary theory was on increasing real GDP. Now, I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you an example of how this works. And you'll see within the table, mathematically, that it does work. And then in the next set of lessons, you're going to see a lot more how this table can be manipulated for for government leaders to manipulate, pull levers, and affect investment, government spending, and net exports. Now, here's what I'm going to say. Government leaders 
are more likely to affect government spending than net exports or, or investment. But they can make decisions to affect investment and net exports. But because government spending is the one that is most able to be manipulated by government leaders, that's where we're going to focus our example, okay? All right, so let's say that government leaders want to uh, increase real GDP. They want to manipulate the economy. Well, what Keynes says that they can do is, he says, why don't you spend more money? And I know what you're thinking, what do you mean just spend more money? Well, the government is able to spend more money. One of the things that we're going to learn in a few lessons is the fact that uh, in the federal government, the federal government is allowed to spend more money than they earn in taxes. And I know that that sounds insane, but believe it or not, it actually works. So let's say for the sake of argument that uh, the leaders of government, which is in this case Congress, they're not really leaders, they're just the representatives, but let's say that they decide to spend a hundred um, let's, if this is in billions, a hundred billion more than they're currently spending. So we're going to increase government spending from 2,700 to 2,800. So all the way down, this is going to become 2,800. This is going to become 2,800. This is going to become 2,800. And then why don't you go ahead and fill in all the way down for 2,800. So going back, previously we said that equilibrium real GDP is 12,400, right? 12,400. Let me go ahead and I'm going to erase this one and leave the other one on the other side. This change in government spending is now going to change total expenditure over here. And so what we're going to do is we got to go back through and we need to add up consumption plus investment plus government spending uh, plus net exports, but our government spending number is a hundred higher. But really all that's going to happen is we increased all these numbers by 100, so all we really have to do is come over here to total expenditure and add a hundred to all of these lines. So 12,100 becomes 12,200 because we only changed one of the numbers by increasing it by a hundred, right? So this total expenditure is now going to be 12,200. Now this one is going to be 12,275. Why don't you go ahead and fill them in all the way down. Okay. Now, here's what I was going to say. Here's we what we kind of expect to happen is this. Because equilibrium, real GDP, was 12400 before we increased government spending by 100 First off, our first thought might be, because we increased government spending by $100, shouldn't that now make our equilibrium, real GDP, 12500 Because all we did was increase government spending by 100. So that should just increase total expenditure by 100, which should increase real GDP by 100. But I want to remind you of something. What I told you earlier, what Keynes's theory was is this, is that a change in one of these other three things is going to trigger an increase in income and an increase in income will then trigger an increase in consumption. So if government spending went up by 100, then, and then if that affects income, then that means that consumption has also changed. And our uh, equilibrium is not only going to go up by 100. What you should do right now is look at your new table with these new numbers and now find the new equilibrium real GDP. Remember, we're looking for the row where income is equal to total expenditure. These numbers right here. Do you see it? Can you see it? It's not 12,500 because look, if we go from here all the way over here, we have 12,575, not 12,500. No, we got to go down a few more. Look, it's at 12,800, 
right here, 12,800 all the way over here to 12,800. This is our new equilibrium real GDP. So how in the world did that happen? If we only increased government spending by 100, how did equilibrium real GDP increase by 400? Well, let me tell you, it happened in the consumption column. See, what happened is when government spending went up by 100, consumption actually wound up going up by 300. We're going to learn about this in the next set of lessons, but basically what happened here was the government spending, this $100, $100 increase, we call that an initial injection. It causes a chain reaction of additional spending that results in consumption growing more than the initial injection. Government spending increased by 100 but consumption increased by 300. See what I mean when I say consumption is doing most of the work? Government spending only increased real GDP by 100. Consumption increased real GDP by 300. Consumption drives the economy, according to Keynes. Look back at the assumptions. This is one of the assumptions that he made that I gave you in the first, in the, in the first video on this. The five assumptions was that consumption drives the economy. And we can see that as evidence here in the fact that a 100 increase in government spending ultimately resulted in a 400 increase in equilibrium real GDP. Why? Because from here up to here, consumption increased along the way. And in the next set of videos, what it is that I'm going to try and help you understand is how this $100 increase in government spending caused so much of an increase in income that resulted in an increase in consumption. Increase in government spending caused an increase in income, which caused an increase in consumption, which caused an even bigger increase in total expenditure. That is our introduction, the beginning of our understanding of Keynesian economic theory.